Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Kan Christo and I'm joined by Space Marine, also known as Defran Strategy. Am I saying Defran right? Defran. Uh, Defran works, you can Defran. say it, I don't mind. Okay. It's a made up word, so Fair enough. there's no correct pronunciation. So what, hot take, so are all the other words. That is true. But, is, uh, <laughs> a, is that a real word? What's that, sorry? Is Christo a real word? Christo is uh, as in Le Comte de Monte Cristo of the fantastic book by Alexander Dumas. Which is a, a so very, is, very real name. It's a, it's a real word then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, name, I guess. Depends yeah. Depends how you define it. Right? I mean, names are, yeah, names are funky. Anyway, um, so in the last episode, we talked about basic empire setup. We went over some, some doctrines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and today, I'd love you to tell me how the heck I'm supposed to use tugs effectively. Okay, so. Yeah, go ahead. I'm looking at your streams. So there might be some delay, but uh, stream, why don't yeah, we uh, no, take stream. a one. You might want to stream. That might have yeah, less. Yeah, I'm doing not that. sure. Um, but no, tux, tux is really simple. Uh, first thing is let's get everything back to a base state. So yeah. get that fuel harvester back to where it originally was. Possible. Sure. Because it's, uh, cause we're Done. basically going to set up a cycle order here. Yeah. I'm streaming now uh, on Discord, that is. And yes, yeah. done. So it's back here. This is a... Uh... Yeah, so now it's back and there, top. right? Yeah. So select your tug fleet. Yep. Hit movement orders. Yep. Then find the fleet that you want to tug. Uh, yep. So turn fleet on yeah. again. Yep. 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 Uh, there it is. Then you're gonna you see track to any ship and fleet. Yep. We're gonna hit that. Mm-hmm. Then we're gonna find the place we want to tug it to. Yep. Done. Then release it at the gas giant that is the gas giant. Okay, yeah. Remind me, what is the gas giant? <laughs> yeah, this is always the thing, because I never a colony. So. Yeah. Uh, five. Like it's five, with its 64 million sorium. So, Very select sexy. like it's five, hit release tractor chips. Mm-hmm. And okay. then you want to uh, auto route back to where you came, and then refuel, and then hit cycle orders. Okay, so this would... So what what I would do to do to to do this what hair the way I would use this because right now there's only one thing to track to so we're definitely not going to cycle but sure. what we would do is we would build twenty things that need tractoring yeah then and we, you just hit cycle and we would and have we would any ship in that fleet yeah and, and we just... would build them into a fleet called fuel stations yeah and then whenever we want to move the things out of fuel stations we just do this would exactly. fuel stations get deleted if I tracted the last ship out of it. Um, no, because what happens, Excellent. uh, because look at shipyard fleet, that doesn't get deleted if you move things out of it, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Works anyway. Okay, awesome. So that worked, that's really good. That's very helpful. So what we're going to do now, first off, it's moving that at 3,400, which means it's going to move mm -hmm. my million ton one at approximately 350. <laughs> um, so 350 is pretty slow, and this is a good way to automate it, so maybe I don't build the million ton ones, but the million ton yeah. ones do have a certain appeal. <laughs> Maybe we'll use that later. They do. So if they I release the, the tractor fleet, need a bigger so, yeah. So the problem, is, the only problem is, it's going to release the tractor ships in a yep. new fleet at that location. Yes, hundred percent. So okay. So, so then is, once that's is, done, this is I'll just kind of a thing it. that's kind of an issue with with this. So once you've got the fleet in the location, mm -hmm. well, let's say you move one ship first, right? Sure. And that creates a fleet above that gas shine. You can then have the release tractor ships go to that fleet clicked on that fleet so it will release into that fleet at the location okay oh. but if you're doing it from the start you don't have that fleet there yet okay so, so how would i release it so i do have a fleet at the location that i want to release them into okay so you would just do what you did with the planet that said release track ships but instead you would select the fleet oh you do it onto the fleet okay yeah. okay okay i think i actually release into that okay release track ships and then just go home okay awesome oh that's really handy there you go nice Nice. And so then you can move as much as you want if cycle yeah. orders. Or you can hit repeat orders if you want to move yeah. a certain amount of them. 3,500 is a bit faster than I need, though. But um, but 300 is too slow. So I think what we should do is we should take Are a Are we little... not escorting the ship, by the way? That's a good point. Uh... It is slower than Raiders. Damn, yeah, it's yeah, true. It's it is slightly slower than Raiders. So I need, like, a twice as large tug so I don't have to escort the ship. Mm. If I f so, can you escort without having the ship used to escort joining the f sh fleet? If you sure. want to follow um, through jump points, yeah, that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Um, I can always just have it join, though; it's not a big deal. 
You can join join it as a sub fleet would probably be the best thing because it would yeah. then you could then detach the sub fleet and you would regain the name and stuff. But sure. Okay, so I'd have to. The issue is through jump points. I guess I'll weaken the water patrol. I still can't oh, believe you named your, your stuff like this. Water patrol <laughs> is great. <laughs> water patrol, what is that? Soul guardians. You like playing soul aliens. guardians? They're, they're guardian guardians of soul. We got Usually the Alma reservers because like Alma defense patrol or coast guard. Yeah, but you, you know, need to be more specific. Them. These these are all garrison fleets. The Alma Observers mm -hmm. are the ones that are protecting Alma, because the planet Alma is Alma. named after an observatory. So, Alma Observers, I see. I see. come on. Comet Chums, because they're hanging out on a comet. <laughs> DX Racers, because they're in DX Kansari and what? DX Racers. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Skippy Watchers, not very inventive, but they're watching around in Skippy. Water Patrol, because it had like 75% hydrophobic extent, hydrographic extent. Soul Guardians, yeah, Guardians of Soul. I don't know what you're talking about, it's perfectly good names. Would I really want to go patrolling around that water? It's very hot, probably quite smelly. <laughs> it is a 60 degree planet. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. It's pretty nasty. Mm. That's right. water reserve. Yeah, so we should... I was going to say I should design a new space station, but I'll do that on... Um, I should do that in an actual episode. So you've got me. What, what are we doing? Ground forces. Talk to me about ground yeah. forces. Okay. What do we have I so haven't far? watched your video yet, by the way. What have we done so far? Okay, we got... This mighty, mighty wow, okay. police detachments because <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to build early military ships and they kept whining about yep. insufficient protection. I said, do you want protection? Have a bunch of people with small arms standing around looking menacing. I mean, that is that is definitely not in an inefficient way to do things. Um, and then we had I, uh, construction teams to yoink up alien artifacts and geosurveys to geosurveys. Okay, so you've done like geological surveys and stuff, yep. right? Yep. Um, not pretty good. Uh, I, okay, so how much do you understand, like, to begin? Basically with, none. Like, basically none. So yeah. do you want? So you kind of understand the UI at least. I yeah, I know how to. Like, I can go to unit class design. I can like say, okay, we're going to need some infantry, some medium vehicles, and so stuff. I, have to, I can pick their armor. The I can pick what's put in it. Yeah. Is it the top of your screen in the ground portion? <laughs> do you notice some numbers? Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't done any tech for ground forces. <laughs> Well, no, the racial weapon strength. So that is based on your ship beam weapon strength. Mm. Now, because you're playing a missile uh, yeah. empire, you've got no beam weapons. So you have Understood. racial armor of 15, but yeah. your weapon strength is like start a base TN weapon yeah. strength. Okay? okay, understood. So you would basically be, if you try, you could shoot yourself. <laughs> and you wouldn't do any damage uh, or penetrate. That's Why a bit of a problem. I should just drop some surface to orbit gorse cannons. Surface to orbit gorse cannons, can they shoot surface to surface? Yes, I actually can shoot surface to surface. And they don't use missile su uh, use supply points. Okay, no. so I can just drop a bunch of gorse cannon surface to orbit things on that's, them. That's totally reasonable. But one thing I think, before we design anything, we need to kind of have an idea of what we're going up against. So let's use the, the fish tank yeah. people uh, as a yeah, great baseline. Yeah, yeah. Um, you sent ground forces against them, didn't you? No, no. Before. You said that you fought, didn't you? So you fight them and then lost everything? No. Okay. Um, do we know <laughs> anything about their classes at all? No, we don't. Great. Okay. We could we could just send a scout against them, I guess. Just drop off. Just send some poor like twenty two mm. <laughs> some shovels. Hey, how you doing, guys? We, we've come I mean, we peace. know. Like we know the names of some of the stuff they have. <laughs> they have a bunch of anti tank teams and construction okay. vehicles. So we've got we've got basically nothing. Yeah. In terms of tech. So, we're going to go through design, but I'm going to say, you want to get your racial weapons check up. The best way yeah. you're going to be doing that is going to be carronades. Um, okay. They're the cheapest, best ground weapons. So, so, so what, this oh, draws from, what, the highest it draws from one? draws carronades, railguns, um, lasers. Uh, I don't, they don't draw from gorse. Yeah, no, I have gorse. Carronades. carronades. So, it draws from, like, four to five different beam weapons, okay? Does it take the um, highest or the sum? Yes, it takes the it takes the highest. So okay. a ten centimeter laser, right? Yeah. It's a ten centimeter laser. A fifteen centimeter carronade, fifteen centimeter carronade. So yeah. carronades are not only bigger, they also are cheaper. It's about half the cost, right? Okay. So What's this the downside of carronades? Uh, carronades generally have very short range uh, okay. in terms of their damage gradient because they are essentially shotguns, space shotguns. Okay. Okay. Cool. So they have very high range, max range, quote unquote, but the damage falloff is so insanely ridiculous that. You could be shooting at 100,000 kilometers and do two damage. Right. Easy. So, 
Cannon Ace really aren't used very often, but they are used by people who want ground weapons because they are cheap to sure. get very good ground weapons. Makes so sense. the next tech you get here would be racial weapon strength five, then uh, eight, then 10, then 12, sure. then 15. I think I might I... do lasers anyway because I wanted to use lasers potentially on fighters. Yeah. And for reference, it's the focal size. I'm pretty sure not the infrared. Okay. It used, it's just the um, oh, yeah, here we go. Need Cause a max tech. of three points of damage. That's, yeah. yeah. You, need, you need the tech, otherwise your weapons yeah. doesn't grade up. That's why your weapons are your armor did scale up because you obviously got better armor. Sure, sure. And the tracking so, speed and the fire control, yeah. First thing I guess we're gonna have to, to go through is what do we want our ground forces to do? Okay, so the um, only thing we want our ground forces to do, because I right now I'm not interested in defensive ground forces. We're relying entirely on uh, planet planetary garrison destroyers to, to defend. Okay. So all we're interested in doing is essentially dropping against discovered alien homeworlds where we we spawn a new NPR, we kill their fleet and then we want to finish the job that how much is ground the... force construction facilities do we have not all like <laughs> funny joke not many okay, let's, so uh, let's take a look. we know the enemy force on that planet is four hundred thousand tons okay? we have seven right now what can you tell me the terrain of the pl that, that enemy planet i would love to uh i think i have a colony there right now i do it is barren. It's barren. Nice, okay. that's good, right? Well, I think that's probably because you nuked it into the ground. Yeah. It does have, um, it does have uh, 28,000 radiation oh, right Jesus. now. Jesus, that is, that is barbaric. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so barren world. Um, if you go on the... Uh, you could go on the forms actually to the hit rates for this, but basically... Brown world, very, very easy to hit yeah, things on. Makes sense. Uh, don't need to worry about it too much. Not much cover. But but still, fortification level is going to affect things. So you see 400,000 tons, that's probably going to be 1.2 million tons. Got okay? it. Effective. Basically assume that your enemy is going to have two to three times more because fortification hides from orbit how much mm -hmm. stuff they actually have. Mm -hmm. Then we have to factor in the fact that when you assault the enemy, you're not going to have that benefit of fortification. Right. Yep. So... Generally speaking, you're then probably going to need about two to five times more forces than them, depending on how the fortification level is. This is not sounding cheaper than nuclear. No. It, well, it is when it's Verenderite, and you don't really give a crap about Verenderite. No, that's what it mostly that, costs to make units, is it? It's, that's the only thing it costs. There's nothing else that it costs. Oh, really? Um, oh, right. This, just, this is just because I'm putting a Gorse cannon. This Verenderite is right. the ground forces thing. That STOs, obviously, they cost for the weapons. Right. A little bit different. If What's you look at any oh, yeah, okay, that's why I've got 1.3 million vendor. Okay. Yeah. So you could literally afford a ridiculous amount of ground force if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need probably three, let's say three times more than our forces. Let's assume the enemy has 1.2 million tons. We're going to need 3.6 million tons of ground forces. To drop 3.3 million tons of ground forces, I'm going to need a staggering transport right. fleet. Well, or you uh, land on, like, let's say, a moon orbiting the world. Yeah. Or you stage your forces and then you drop ship them in. Yeah. Let me check. Over time, right? I'm not certain how plausible that is because I don't think. Does it have a nearby other planet? That would work. Not as well. that nearby. It's like 103 million kilometers away. That's not that bad. How much yeah. takes eight hours um, per increment, and then also. So. Yeah. Yeah, because the transports I'm using right now are just designed to move around little. Um, yeah, transports are really important because. Everything in, in ground forces, tonnage wise, is transports. Deal with transports. Yeah. yeah. So you want to be kind of setting up your transports to transport a certain hierarchy at a time. Mm -hmm. Sure, makes sense. So let's say we want to transport a division or a regiment or a, you know, blah, de blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so what I would set up you to do is be like, okay, let's say I want like four divisions. That could be 800,000 tons of ground forces, right? Uh -huh. How much, how many transports am I going to need to transport that? And then how how much okay am I with how much I'm sending onto the planet to start with? Because yep. those first forces that hit the planet, they're going to get minced. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to get shot to, to hell. Thing. And so usually we want to send like the tanks. Yeah. Up. Um, right I feel now, like I should be able to glass them. like just a small corner of a continent and then drop the people there. Unfortunately, we don't. There's <laughs> continents and stuff is not modeled. Yeah, fair it's, enough. Everything's that... a sphere in Aurora. Everything. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, we, what we're trying to do is divide, design 
Division yep. size... Well, hang on. What are we doing here? When I design a unit here... So this is an element. Yeah. So an element is a uh, uh, thing that goes within the formation, and the yep. formation goes within the hierarchy. Okay. And the, okay. so the smallest the smallest formation you would refer to as a formation, obviously, but if you were to try and put would that be, I would call real battalion. Terms. Okay. In, so we're talking about battalions and formations. Okay. Fine. Makes sense. So you want battalions, they go into regiments, they go into divisions, which go into army groups. Okay. Okay. And generally speaking, in my opinion, the smallest ever like hierarchical formation, the formation you would actually send to attack something, would be a regiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they're going to have supply, they're going to have enough forces. When you get to very small formations in Aurora, what happens is you have issues with breakthrough and you have issues with morale. Yeah. And so the game heavily incentivizes larger formations. Okay. Yeah. But you have to manage costing. So, oh, and sorry? unfortunately, costing. we don't have. To, yeah, costing. Because in... we don't have 2.2, .2, version 2.2 .2 yet. Yeah. Uh, so if you notice in your Grand Force construction queue, every facility builds in bloody um parallel it doesn't build on top of each other on one thing right right okay yeah sure so if you think about this as in terms of your so, ground force construction rate per year let's yeah. say build 320 points per year right mm -hmm. if you have a thousand point formation building that'll take you three years but if you split that up into five 200 point formations that will and you have five facilities that will take one year right got it or yeah. half a year so that's when, when we're building these formations, we need to think that in mind of how long will it take to build that in a year, which is generally my rule of thumb, mm -hmm. and how can we mass deploy that? Because again, we just want to get numbers, sure. a lot of numbers, a lot, um, and costs, especially for stuff like STOs, which you probably noticed, very high. Yeah, sure. Um, so let's design a let's design a, a regiment now. The problem you've got is you've got no tech. <laughs> sure, it's fine. We can design a. I, I don't mind designing a um... uh, kind of a. No. Well, the problem is if I unit clone, I can't put them into a formation before I invent them, right? Uh, correct, but that will change in 2.2. <laughs> Good, okay. Feels like I should just nuke them till 2.2. Um, well, you won't spend like a million galaxite doing it. <laughs> it won't take a million galaxite, it's going to be fine. I think, yeah, I mean, there is a potentially... Well, what could I do? What could I do? Because you can... We well, could just kill this. We could legitimately just notepad this, like, and then you could do it after. Yeah, that's true. I'm considering trying to kill them with missile supply points because let's yeah. So let's talk. I suggest what we do is we talk theoretically about ground forces, um, in terms of like what what would we need here? What would you put in a formation? And then, or you know, here's a better idea. Let's uh, just load up one of your games where you have stuff invented. Okay, uh, sure. Why not? Uh, let me just uh, find a game. I have cool. way too many war saves. Yeah. So let's look. Let's look firstly at. The theoretical of ground forces with you kind of going through why you've put what where. And then let's talk about um, orbit to surface weapons that are missiles. Uh, uh, yes, the maintenance SDOs. supply point. No, no. Yeah. Uh, orbit to surface, as in bombardment, that are okay. missile supply point efficient. Because I think looking at it, it seems like um, like a big laser would basically be the way to do it. If yeah, you wanted probably. to do it that way. But the part, the the the, the, uh, the there's there are a lot of issues with like the costs, right? Um, sure. Yeah. So I'm I'll stream, I guess, and then you can kind of show that on your streams. Yep. Sounds <laughs> um, good. Just make sure that you can see everything. I've just got my YouTube game up at the moment. Um, sure. Yeah. Because I have stuff in there. Uh, can you see everything? Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So, um, everything's a bit spread out, but um, in this particular game, I'm gone two two pile into ground forces, but I have two separate kind of um. Uh, arms, you can say, of ground forces, right? So I have yep. garrison and I have kind of marines. So, you know, things that are going to attack things, sure. things that are going to defend things. Very easy. They are then uh, set up into these templates. So we can see here garrison forces, marine forces, what not. Yep. The marines, larger, have heavier armor, that kind of stuff. Sure. Uh, they're expected to assault things. The garrisons have less armor, are smaller in size because I want cheap cost and put them on every bloody body possible and have a bunch of fortification level, which makes them very hard to look <clears> out. <throat> yep. So let's talk about the battalion, right? So we want to assault something. This is a Marine infantry battalion. As you can see here, this is what it contains within it. Yeah. Uh, Marine is, this is a infantry with improved personal weapons mm -hmm. and powered infantry armor. Okay. Yep. So the reason I did this is penetration is key. 
you do not have good penetration, you are going to lose a lot of... You, get a, you have a very low hit chance to begin with. Low penetration means you have an even lower chance to actually penetrate through. Yep. Low damage, even lower chance to damage. Is armor on units, it ground forces, tracked the same way as it is for sh there shit? There is no tracking. No, right, friend. it's just so hit So basically, chance. it is a pa check or pass. It was okay, a damn it. it with hit points and armor. You either kill or you do nothing. Got it. Okay. So this means if your penetration is 12 and your armor is 12, 100% penetration chance. Okay. Okay. If you're, you know, and, and it's done by um, brackets like AP divided by armor uh, squared. Got it. That's the formula for it. Okay. So if you did four divided by eight squared, that would be 25% chance to penetrate. Drop. Sure. So, penetration is very important, so I'm okay with the increased cost and increased size because I want high penetration value. Yep. Um, but I don't want to also go for something heavier because infantry, unfortunately for them, <laughs> they're expendable. Yeah. Um, sure. The main purpose of infantry is hit point and soak. Mm -hmm. So you can see the differences here, right? So this is a infantry battalion. It's got 11,000 health points. Yeah. Right? You've got a, then I've got this, which is more like an armored personal, personnel carriers, right? This is 4,000 health points. Okay. So you've got to kind of think, okay, this is for soaking damage. They're going to be landing first. We give them decent armor so they can kind of take some hits. They have good enough guns um, and they have the capability to deal with any enemy armor. So they have light anti-tank weapons. Yeah. That's what this is. Then they are within a regiment. The regiment is the thing above them. Within each regiment, there are four battalions. Um, this can support 50,000 tons in total, okay? Oh, okay, so, so this I... is just full of, like, headquarters and... and... Yeah, so this is literally... Right. I'll show you again on the order of battle yeah. here. This is, a, this is an infantry regiment. Yeah. Okay? So I have marine regiment. This can support 50,000 tons. The HQ in the regimental headquarters here, 50,000 tons. Yeah. 10,000 of that is within itself, and that is logistics, mm -hmm. okay? And then the rest are infantry within that formation. So we have four battalions yeah. right here, and they're all of 10,000 ton size. Okay. Important yeah. to note, the HQ must be able to support the formation, its own formation and everything below Including it. Including itself, yeah, okay. Yeah, and the logistics must be able to support everything below it correctly in this case. I don't use frontline supply because otherwise they get blown up. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd rather have my formation that's going to be sitting in reserve anyway, have all my logistics trucks that are going to be sending supply downwards to okay. the formations. This is enough supply to support these formations for approximately 30 days of combat. Okay. You can, it's very easy to, to, to get an idea of this. This is 10,000 GSP need, uh, times that by 10. Uh, you have this inherently built in, and then you times that by 10, you get 30 days. Sure. Um, you start the, with eight hours. The, when you say the, the battalions are in the regiment, so unlike with ships, you don't assign like the each each tier of your hierarchy there is an actual unit. It's an actual or rather, formation. A formation. This is a rather. formation. Yeah. 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 The, these are all individual formations. So if I want, I can take this guy out of it. I can just take yeah. the hierarchy, and he's out. Right. Okay. Got it. Uh, and I can just drag him back in as needed. Okay. So and you can move anything on the planet anywhere you want, obviously. Sure. Um, okay. So Fine. that's the infantry regiment. It costs. 1,527 Vendorite. Mm -hmm. um, this is how many maintenance supplies it will need for re refuel. And this is going to be part of then, we go through another hierarchy, our division. Right, and when okay. you say you require that many maintenance supplies, are they the same maintenance supplies that ships use? They are not. They're ground su support supplies. So are they, are you, see actually... these... Sorry, good. you see these LM2s here? Yeah. You can see this. These are what carry ground supply points, or GSP, which is Got located it. here. If you do not have enough supply as indicated by this uh, percentage, mm -hmm. your hit rate goes down, I think it's to, you You, you basically take an 80% negative to your base hit chance. Okay. So, kind of bad. <laughs> sure. Not a, good, not a great mm, idea. Yeah. Um, so, you need these supply points, and every formation inherently has uh, three days worth of them within that formation. Every okay. element. Once they're out of those three days, they need resupply, yep. and they will draw that from anything that's above them, or on the planet that's a vehicle, or they will draw from inbuilt uh, supply. There's when you say above supply. them, do you mean in orbit, or do you mean above them in the hierarchy? In hierarchy. Okay, so these guys will draw from him because the vehicles can go downwards, yeah. sideways, and, and infantry uh, logistics can't. So these can only go in the formation itself. Can they supply the, okay. the formation itself? They can't supply other formations. Okay. Very important to know. So we then have the marine 
uh, regiment done right that's the main regiment then yeah. we put that into the division now because we've already put all the logistics into the regiments we don't need to put logistics into the division because otherwise we would be carrying like 50,000 tons or whatever of sure. logistics in that one hierarchical formation. So if I go to uh, Manticore, um, this is a marine division. Yep. Okay. So it has within it three infantry regiments. It has a mobile support regiment. Each regiment has four battalions in it. Each battalion is 10,000 tons. These are standardized. However, there is obviously a different regiment here with um, different vehicles. Sure. This makes up a total of 200,000 tons. I then have four troop transports, which carry 50,000 tons each. That's one regiment each. That can then move, with four transports, can move one division. Got it. Okay. I then when have, you're loading, then do you load this. by regiment, or do you load, can you say load the you whole You load it division? by the hierarchy. So if I go to nice. here, and I go here, and I go load all subunits, oh, nice. I hit that's garrison, very, very I can load sexy. the entire hierarchy. Nice. So... That's kind of how we're dividing things. Now, this doesn't go into why I picked that, some of these units and, and how effective they would be. But essentially sure. speaking, more armor, good. Yeah. More damage, good. You want something to soak fire. Mm -hmm. You want something to deal damage. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a crap ton of it. Sure, yeah. That's the gist of ground forces, generally speaking. And also, there is one thing I will touch on. It's the concept of war stock. Okay. Um you need something that can replenish your forces. Mm -hmm. And how replenishment of forces works is you need to build excess elements or the things that can subsist of formations, the things that make formations, into its own and use that to then replenish your existing stuff to maintain uh, a war, right? Right. Uh, so for this example, in this game, I have this formation. Mm -hmm. Okay? A lot of stuff. Sure. Basically, you hit useful placements, then all these formations on the planet, if they lose that's not in their template, yeah. they will draw from it. And, and can you tell it to, is... like, not engage? Yeah, so anything in uh, rear echelon, if it doesn't have any weapons that can actually shoot from that point, it won't uh, Got it. shoot, right? Um, the ground force uh, position is very important for the different element types, but basically, suffice it to say, you want something like this. And what yes, I do is sense. I say... 25% of my production, I build into this. Fair enough. Okay? Yeah. So that I always have 25% replacements in case of casualties, of course. Sure. Um, On the logistics. The of the sizes. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. On the logistics, show me the regiment again. Sure. Thanks. So here we've got uh, 78 logistics attributes. Yeah, so that's 78,000, that but that's also not counting the built in. Okay, so is that what they carry, or is that what they can provide per month, or what? That is the total amount that these trucks here, yeah. that are part of the the highest formation. So mm -hmm. this is its own formation, right? The infantry regiment. Yeah. And within that formation, it's got 9,734 tons yeah. worth of these. And that's how much logistics they carry. 500 times 157. Okay. Times 157? That so, 500, that's the amount of logistics trucks. Oh, One that's truck, the number. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so when, when, it, when you say they carry that much, how do they replenish that? When they when they use, like, when you need to supply formation, right, the truck disappears. Okay. So, the only way to replenish it is, again, go back to your war stock, bring out more, more vehicles, trucks. put them okay. into the regiment. Okay, so the, the supplies are literally just their trucks. They're self-contained Yes. supplies in a truck okay and so if you those supplies they get used up in combat or constantly they not get used up constantly uh when you're in combat th that will get they will use them up again okay. you get three days then it will start taking down from 100 percent, and then you'll start supplying okay got it got it and remind me sorry so it's, they have 2500 they use that you say once every 30 days they use all of it is that right once like that. this is this right here the gsp is for three days Three days. Okay. okay, so they use that much every three days. Uh, yes, but they start with three days worth. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no, sorry, I got this one. <laughs> they start with three days worth of GSP. Yeah. That's their total GSP needed for uh, for eight hours of combat. Okay. Okay. But they start with eighty hours of that, ten times that. Okay. That okay. they that they have it built in that they'll be okay. They'll be completely fine. So. That is every eight, every combat increment, which is eight hours. So you use 2,500 GSP every eight hours for this formation to fight after its inherent supply. Okay. 
So, in other words, you've decided, in this particular case, to give them uh, enough to fight almost... For 30 days. Yeah, about 27 days it's around there, I think. Is it? you got 10, 78... 000 plus uh, 80 hours from each. Okay, so, but they're using 10,000 every 8 hours. Um, 10, 8... Yeah, but it's from individual, so it's 2, 4, so... Am I am I am I am I misremembering the the numbers? Well, so it I'm should be. Yes, I am. I must be misremembering because there's no way that would work. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. This is this this is every eighty hours. <laughs> My bad. This is eighty. That's hours. every eighty if, hours. If, uh, if okay, that's okay, three okay. days times ten, yeah. get thirty days right. Got that's it. the okay. correct numbers. My bad. No, no, so, no worries, no worries. That's three days worth of supply. Um, but obviously they use. Uh, they the. Divide that by three, right? That's how much they will use. Or divide that by eight hours or, or the number. That's how much they'll use, right? Um, but I generally just just simplify that out to, okay, I need 10x that for 30 days. I'm good. Done. Um, sure. That makes and sense. And generally will work out. Okay. Uh, most combats, I would say, don't last longer than two weeks. Okay. I would say. Um, I? There's even stuff like boarding that takes like minutes. You'll sure. never need supply for that. Uh, but for these formations, unless you're sitting on, like, bloody Cadia itself... Yeah. <laughs> ...and, like, dug into hell against another formation that's dug into hell, you're not going to be lasting more than probably a month in combat. Okay, makes sense. And if sense. you do, you should probably have extra supply battalions to come in and replace... Yeah, sure. ...those formations. And so, so we've... There's... Talk to me about the different kinds of units I might want to inc include. So we've okay, got so... infantry, who are basically damage soaks. We've, and yep. then we've got... How do we... We know how to damage soak. How do we kill? Mm -hmm. So... As you, as you probably saw, the most efficient weapon... Because I told you about the damage and penetration, right? The most yeah. efficient weapon is the thing that that, that that gets to that number... Yes. ...with the most amount of shots at the lowest tonnage and cost. Sure. Okay? But obviously, we don't know what our enemy's going to have. Sure. So... Um, let's take your uh, racial arm strength, right? It's 15. That would give an infantry soldier like mine here, with my infantry armor, 15 armor. Yeah. The most efficient thing at killing that is going to be a weapon that's 15 penetration and enough damage to get through with as many shots as possible because we've got a lot of targets. So it's going to really depend on the enemy you're going against. So you uh -huh. want to kind of have capabilities to match your opponent's capabilities. Uh -huh. So we're trying to beat, with our armor, infantry weapons, right? Because if infantry weapons can't penetrate us, they're useless. Jock. Sure. Practically useless. But we also need something to penetrate our own armor because our, our enemy is probably going to have armor as well. Sure. So it just becomes kind of a weapons race against what you need and how efficient you can accomplish that. Mm -hmm. So infantry can only mount light weapons. Uh, so light anti-vehicle, light bombardment, light anti-aircraft, crude serpent and stealth. You know, stuff you would expect an infantryman to be able to, to handle. Sure, yeah. Right? Light when it says crew served they... anti-personnel, that's... I mean, what's that? We're talking basically... You can think of it like an MG42. Okay. Uh, that, sure. kind of, that kind of idea, right? So it's it's like a heavy machine gun. Again, all this is abstracted because that's how raw it is. So you could think of this as a unicorn. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Still work. <laughs> um, but light vehicles can handle anything up to, um, I believe, medium. I th I'm not sure if they can do heavy. Okay. But basically, the bigger the vehicle, the heavier the weapon they can pull on. You can go up all the way to like super heavy weapons. Mm -hmm. But generally... When you look at things like anti-vehicle, less shots, high penetration, right? Yeah. So useful against things where they're, you know, a vehicle is a lot more cost mm -hmm. to have than a bunch of infantry. So that would be useful against it because you only need a couple shots anyway to kill that many vehicles because they can't fit that much of them. Mm -hmm. But you need the penetration. But then you look at something like a medium auto cannon. That's kind of an in-between. You get good, decent penetration and good damage. This would be something that would be good against, like, 40k space marines right where sure. you've got a decent number of infantry and they've got pretty good armor but they're all, they're also not a titan right yeah when you go to medium vehicles you get heavy weapons i don't have them in 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 sure. in, 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 in this game because it's low tech um then you'll get heavy vehicles uh super heavy vehicles ultra heavy vehicles these will all have modifiers so uh light vehicles are the hardest to hit in the game yeah then infantry Followed by medium vehicles. Uh, that's what the hidden mod basically is. Sure. Uh, effectively. Slots. You can have multiple weapons on a vehicle. 
as you can see here, two crews of that. That's not what happens. Oh, that's a Bigger, slot. Big... I thought it said shots. Okay. No, slots. So you can have lot, multiple weapons on one vehicle. Uh, yeah. Past medium vehicles. Hit points, as you may expect, this gets multiplied by your racial... Um, by your racial armor strength, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah, it does. So it's just a multiplier on the racial armor strength, and that gets your hit points. Oh, okay. Um, so so in order to, when we're talking about racial that weapon strength of 10, we shoot a yep. weapon strength of 10 that does penetrate something, but if it had a hit points of what what happened so nine and eleven was if i had, if anything below if i had ten or below 100 percent kill chance 100 percent penetration yep. chance okay if i had anything above that you then need to roll okay okay but the hit points is that a roll after whether or not you penetrate or is it just combined it's into the penetrate penetration? you roll to penetrate and then you yep. roll to hit points to the exact same roll there was no tracking of hit points there was no tracking of armor yeah you either kill or penetrate or you do nothing that's it Okay. Oh, okay. So Sorry. So the, so the penetration, so the hit points and armor are just purely combined. Yeah, they're just a check. Okay. okay. They're not combined. They they just done after each other, but they're the same role. Like, oh, okay. Like, I see what you mean. Okay. So it's not like so when you say the hit points is multiplied by armor, you don't mean. Oh, you you mean so let's say something has an armor of two. Sorry, hit points of yeah. two, and you have a racial armor of ten. So you need to first that do a check. That means twenty you, health. You have twenty health. Okay. So do you pen? Is your penetration good enough to get in? Which or are you lucky enough to get in? And then also, yeah. are you lucky enough to kill? Yeah. Okay. Is your damage? And your good damage enough. is you, your roll when you have a damage of ten. Is the roll to see whether you do one, two, three, etc. to ten, or or how does that work? Or is it just no, a chance? No. So, place? so basically, right? Let's let's say we've just hit. Let's say we've fired five hundred shots, right? Yeah. We've we've hit ten of them. Yeah. That's sometimes how it is. Uh, we then roll to penetrate. Let's assume mm -hmm. that our penetration is four. Enemy armor is eight. Okay. That means that we'll have a 25% chance to penetrate. Yeah. We penetrate with three of our shots. Okay. We got our damage is also four. Our enemy hit points is also eight. We then roll 25% of our hits. Then or okay, same of our calculation on the hit points. Got yeah, it. Yeah, exact same calculation. Got it. And that will determine how many we kill at that point. I feel like I want to make an only heavy vehicle army but you're saying uh, that you think is you want damage but, soak. But, so the thing with heavy vehicles is you are going to pay out the ass in cost and yeah. maintenance but there is some very big benefits to that because armor and penetration is king yeah right so if we look at like a medium vehicle here and we put on medium armor we're gonna yeah. have 32 armor yeah and if then we're gonna have like 100 but i mean be in, that seems insane if we're multiplying health by racial armor because now, yeah. now we now we have like 140 hit points. They're never going to kill us. Yeah, but they're going to be able to obviously have their own heavy weapons that are going to. Ah, is the that. damage on there a multiplier on on racial? Yeah, weapons, right? so I'll show you. So, uh, these numbers, so that's like a 400 damage medium yeah. anti-vehicle weapon. So you see you see these numbers, right? Yeah. Um, this is kind of a multiplier. So you see two, four, one, like five, whatever. Yeah. This is multiplied on my racial weapon strength. So ice up well, we get no additional. So it's just 10 damage because that's. How yeah. much we do light anti vehicle we get a 3x on our damage and yeah, we get sure. a 2x on our ap okay yeah. same same deal and then and then shots is just determined by the type of weapon there's nothing to do with that bigger guns more and maintenance supplies bigger but vehicle, if we, more maintenance supplies sh show me a medium vehicle medium armor um just thing just so i can look at it on the on the right and the medium, so this medium is armor uh, this is a very well. conventional uh tank right so okay uh, like a HMG uh, uh, and the yeah. uh, an anti-tank gun. Oh, okay, so the hit points. Oh, sorry. I thought it was going to multiply the racial armor of the medium vehicle against the hit points. So it would be four times thirty-two, but it's not doing that. It's doing four times. It's four eight. times eight. Okay, so it yeah. doesn't. The hit points are under the armor. You can put more armor on, but that doesn't mm -hmm. increase the number of hit points under them. Okay. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. That's much because I was thinking, you know, how are you ever going to kill four times twenty-eight with like a fourteen yeah. <laughs> damage weapon? That's never going to happen. But okay, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. But still, I mean, okay, so I can see now how they are, you know, they are still going to be able to penetrate even if you go, you know, hard on yeah. that. Okay, but, but it still seems like only is... a very small portion of their army is going to be able to penetrate you. So if you made a just like a comical super heavy tank. Yes, you some of them titans, are going to be able to penetrate sure. you. Yeah, some of them are going to be able to penetrate you, but only like 1% of their army is going to be kitted out in anti-vehicle weapons. Like, if they fire, like... Let, let's just do, do the math real quick. Let's say you've got 64 armor, right? Yeah. And you're firing, let's say this is infantry weapon, you're firing a penetration 10, damage 10 weapon. Okay? Yeah. Your opponent has 64 armor. What's the chances of that to penetrate? Uh, I can't, get, I can't do log... <laughs> I can't Bracket do is, is, we can do this easy. Uh, just 
brackets. Yeah. Uh, then put... Um, I need to open a spreadsheet here. 10 divided by 64 in brackets. Hang on, hang on. Let me open a spreadsheet that isn't... Just use Google, my, man. It's my bank, <laughs> my bank account savings sheet. This is a wrong... <laughs> This is the wrong <laughs> Google, on the Google account to be logged into. All right, here we go. Why use Google when you can spreadsheet? All right, so we've got an armor of 40, 64. And we've got oh. a penetration of 10. Yep. So 10 divided by 64 squared. But the obviously it's in brackets for the start. We've got the armor divided by the pen chance. No, it's 10 squared. divided by armor. It's not... Oh. The way around, but pen divided by armor squared. Do I not have a squared thing? Do you not I'm have squares on that? I don't seem to. You can just do this, which is the, the, the gentleman's squared. So they've got a 0.2% pen chance. 0.2%, right? You sure it's correct? It should be lower than that, I would imagine. Maybe not. You square something by times it by itself. I'm not crazy. Yes, right? that's how yeah, that works. Good. <laughs> good. I, I did it's been a while well. since I manually squared something. Yeah, so that would have a 0 0.02 uh, for, so that would be a 2.4% chance to uh, penetrate. Yes, that's what I got. So you can see, yes, it's not amazing, right? Uh, that's not, that's a 2.4%. It's not a 0.24%. No. It's 2.4%. So what, how is this wrong then? Pen divided by armor Your, rating squared. Pen divided by armor rating in brackets and then squared. Oh, not armor rating squared. Pen divided by armor yeah. rating squared. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's 10, then 64, then in brackets, then squared. Sure. I'm loving this way of doing this, by the way. Welcome to Aurora Math. <laughs> I hope everyone's loving the, <laughs> sure. the mathematics lesson here. We figured out what squaring is, guys. <laughs> We've oh, yeah. also been four percent chance to pen, even with yeah. just pen ten. Yeah, so we're not going to stop them penning us basically because they're gonna if they come at us with a full, you know, realistically. If they fire a thousand shots, a hundred yeah. of them hit, they're still going to get some pens. And if they get that another lucky chance to kill you, sure. with the hit hit points, and your hit points will be lower than your um, armor usually, uh, then you've just lost that vehicle to like a thousand scrubs. Sure, sure. <laughs> And that kind of sucks, right? So you're looking for kind of a balance because you want good armor, but also if you put all your eggs in a single Titan, all right, so a new plan. Will bring it, down. it sounds like we want the cheapest, most effective weapon we can get. So I think I think maybe we're gonna do like a, we do like a bunch of infantry and then some light vehicles just to pen them, and then we basically want like lightly armored you, tank I've, destroyers. I've kind of done that um, in. Yeah. I kind of done that in, in, in my game. So if I go to my marine division, right? I had three infantry regiments to soak yeah. and do some damage. And then I had these things for mobile support uh, battalions. Okay. These have IFVs in them or infantry fighting vehicles. And what they essentially are is a, if I just bring it up, is a light uh, vehicle with a medium auto cannon. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. There's a few reasons why I did this. Number one. Yes, it gives me some extra penetration, which is great. Light vehicles also have some decent armor. Yeah. But there are too many advantages to light vehicles. They're 50% harder to hit with the hit mod chance, mm -hmm. which is really cool and really good for them. And then also, because it's a, it's, it, they're vehicles, they're light vehicles, they're very cheap and very uh, tonnage cheap as well. Mm -hmm. And you can fit a lot of them. And breakthrough chance is benefited by vehicles. And what Breakthrough does is allows you to attack for free again. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Wow. And it depends on the enemy's size of their formation, uh -huh. how much you have, and what kind of uh, force your tonnage is. So a static element can't do a Breakthrough, for example. Got it. Obviously. Sure. <laughs> okay, so talk to, me about, uh, talk to me about HQs. So you need, HQs. You need like one... I, I forget how... You told me about this. You told me this already, but you need like... Go ahead. <laughs> so headquarters, I'm not sure if, if it's on screen or not, but um, headquarters, you want to put in every single formation. You need headquarters so that you can put things into hierarchies. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't put things into hierarchies, then obviously we have problems because... Sad, sad times. Let's not do that. Bonuses sure. and logistics and all that other stuff. And just micro, honestly. You can adjust the capacity here. This is in tonnage. Okay. 
So 10,000 tons, 100,000 tons, 100,000 tons. Oh, you can just type that. Okay. Yeah. Green, any green text you can type on. Sure. Well, I mean, no. <laughs> you should be able to. Yeah, but oh, look I at can't the, do it on there. Yeah, but look at the bottom bit. Listen, Steve, Steve's <laughs> a genius. Stop, stop complaining. <laughs> it's, my, it's all consistent. No, it was uh, blasphemy. <laughs> he okay. is a genius. So, so 100,000 tons uh, mm -hmm. capacity. This means that it can support itself and everything under it if it's within 100,000 tons. So in our case, we have 50,000 tons. Yes, total. total. 000, yeah. So if we have, in our case, we have a regiment, right? And that has a, a HQ within that regiment here. Yeah. With a HQ of 50. That means 50,000. Okay. Yeah. That means they can support itself and four other 10,000 ton formations, which sure. I have. So four yeah. battalions and then the regiment Go itself, because the regiment itself is 10,000. And you've then, made your regiment have just HQs and logistics, and then you've told yeah. it to avoid combat. You check that box in the. They all, shot. Anything that does not shoot at another ground for uh, army, like another ground yeah. element, should be on avoid combat. Yeah, got it. Okay, and then you also put on in order of battle. You go field position, rear echelon, and what yeah. this does is it basically tells um, when they do like, who am I firing against? Sure. It weights things. So sure. you'll have a 5% chance to be targeted relative okay. to 100% if you're on front line. Mm -hmm. And then also they need um, to actually shoot you at that position. They need med they need uh, medium bombardment, I believe. Maybe wrong with that. He at least heavy bombardment, long range bombardment. They need basically bombardment weapons to be able to shoot into rare echelon. Okay, got it. So that's why they're safe in the back. Makes sense, makes sense. N not a problem. Um, the field positions I'll go through really quick. Field defense, standard thing, everything's on that automatically. Uh, you can build fortification level, fine. Frontline attack, when you select it, it will get rid of all your fortification level, but it gives you an increased chance to break through. Okay. You want this on all invading forces because your fortification won't go up much anyway. So sure. you want the extra chance to break through. Makes sense. Support, uh, that has a 25% weighting and it provides you with... Also, frontline attack can attack any formation. Okay. in positions so that's big if you want to take like rare echelon and stuff yeah but support um this is where you would put line bombardment weapons uh right. bombardment weapons, so mortars that kind of like that rear echelon this is where you put your hqs your heavy bombardment weapons okay long range bombardment weapons that kind of stuff. and why are you not using heavy bombardment or even light bombardment as far as you've talked about so far um so i am in some of my formations but i'm doing it selectively so for example in these garrison divisions i have a fire support battalion Okay. okay. That has 95 bombardment weapons, medium bombardment weapons. The reason I've done this is because I don't expect these forces to invade a planet, and I expect them to sit behind a wall for 30 days straight and bombard the enemy forces as they come close. Got it. Now, bombardment weapons are very ineffective in terms of efficiency, because they're expensive for relatively few shots, and they can they do decent damage, but they're not really that good compared to just a ton of shots in terms of okay. like um, cap. The reason they're good though, and cap avoids that, is uh, they can shoot from positions. So if you have a wall of infantry, sit your arty behind it, they can't target your arty. And let's say you've got tiny hit chances mm -hmm. for them to shoot you because you're in a fortified position because you're being invaded. Yeah. You, your artillery can not only not get shot at, but it can shoot into their rear echelon while maintaining your fortification. Mm -hmm. And if their rear echelon has their supplies in it, sure. or their HQs, or their bombardment yeah. weapons, makes sense. Very, very <clears throat> important. But okay. when we're on the attack, it we're causes be trying you to break problems through anyways. because static weapons can't break through. Yeah, they degrade your own breakthrough uh, in terms of effectiveness. So you're talking about like, um, uh, what you call it? You're going for line attack anyway, so you're going to be attacking to the rear echelon. Yeah, sure. Anyway, makes sense. So that's generally why you don't bring about weapons. And also, again, you just want as much armor and tonnage and, you know, yeah, sure. uh, shock and all, I guess. You would, you would Joy, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, awesome. I think a lot of that makes sense. And then on statics, uh, yeah. you can't put missiles in them. Oh, hang on, excuse me. No. no and so Sorry. Um, yeah, so static, you can't put missiles in them, which, no. is, which is a damn tragedy. Um, it's like an orbital station or whatever, if you really want to. But you can't missiles. armor stations. Um, yes, you can, because any station with missiles would be a military station. It would just be an engine without ships, or a ship without engines. But you th I thought you had to check no armor to make it a station. That yes, but that's commer that there'd be a commercial station. So there are two... Can you show me, show me the... An official station, right? An official station. 
Okay, is so you're talking about just build a ship without an engine. Official station is this, okay? Yeah. Uh, where is it? This. No yeah. armor. 100,000 tons. Classified as a space station for construction purposes. Only 100,000 tons. God. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 a what, what piddly platform. little station. <laughs> <laughs> a defense platform is yeah. just a ship without engines. You build in a shipyard, then move to where you want to move it to. Because you can't put weapons on a commercial vessel, which a space yeah. station has to be. And if you okay. wanted to use that around a planet long term without having to ferry it back and forth, the planet would need a population and a maintenance supply. Uh, sure. Maintenance facility. Uh, or if you don't want to do that at all, That's you fine. can just do maintenance life and, and do what I did here. Oh, yeah, because maintenance life is just, it just means you just, you know, you just load more stuff onto stuff. And I just with. rotate them out expensive. after 12 years or whatever um, yeah. as needed. Yeah. Um, but if you sit above a planet or you sit uh, in all, uh, next to like maintenance modules on a ship, yeah. then you can get sorted out. I actually have that in this. I have uh, this guy. Yeah, uh, which can support has a recreational module and has maintenance modules, so <laughs> can support that. Um, yeah, um, makes sense. The problem with ground forces at the end of the day is that you're going to be dealing with a lot of different kinds of targets, yeah. and you're going to want. There's never going to be the most efficient thing in terms yeah. of what you want. What I would generally recommend for an invasion is if you can afford it, as many vehicles with as many shots as you possibly can get with good mm -hmm. enough penetration. Okay. All okay. right. That all sounds good. That makes sense. Get a bunch of and vehicles if in. If you're going defense, just a crap ton of infantry and then static uh, support weapons in mm -hmm. uh, in defense and mm -hmm. uh, construction vehicles because this multiplier you see this. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a multiplier on your fortification level based on your planet. So, if you let's say have a fortification level of six, you're and you're on a jungle mountain world, that gets multiplied by three to eighteen. If you're at 18, you're talking about hit chances in like the 0.05% chance. <laughs> sure, yeah, not good. Not good. So, okay. So, okay. lots of troops, very heavily armored, very heavily weaponed. And uh, get some racial weapon strength and actually research some ground force stuff. Oh, another yeah. thing I didn't actually comment on is capabilities. Uh, they're yeah. really important. <clears throat> Basically, these things, which I don't have here because they cost a lot. Uh, you should be able to do with your million labs. Um, sure. These, as they say, essentially, when you are on a planet that has, uh, you know, your human tolerances, right? Sure. If they're outside, if it's outside your tolerance, you get a negative in terms of hitting, but it can be almost like halved your hit okay. chance. Okay. You put this on, uh, you actually gain twice the normal hit chance. Oh, okay. Not just so, a normal. Okay. If you're fighting in a lot of worlds with extreme pressure, with extreme temperature, well, they don't really have to be that much higher than your, um, uh, you know, racial, right? Yeah. You can massively improve your hit chances, um, by getting these capabilities. Of course, the negative is the cost starts to balloon, sure. and you can only put certain cap only certain capabilities can go on certain stuff. So you can't put, um, I think you you can't put like uh, boarding capability on a, okay. a tank. <laughs> right yeah fair enough so keep that in mind um but yeah it's it's just it's just a, literally it's just a game about how many shots can i get away with mm -hmm. while having enough penetration armor to actually get through the thing in the first place okay and, uh, there you go. all right that is awesome and very helpful thank you very much i need to go and cook dinner i'm starving yes. but that's very helpful we will try and do an invasion of these bastards soon you're gonna need some time to build up that though you're gonna uh... yes well i'm gonna finish killing all their population first because they, no, yes. they only have like 50 million left or something. But you could capture the population and put them in forced labor camp. No, we have no interest in suffering the alien to live, I'm afraid. But why can't you just force them to mine minerals and then slowly poison them with the radiation that you nuked them? <laughs> well, I already did. I mean, they're basically all dead already. Anyway, mm. good stuff. Thanks much for your help. Appreciate yep. it. I will see you next time. See you next time. And thanks for watching chat. Thanks for watching stream. I'm off. I'm going to go eat. It's been a pleasure. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we will start trying to build a ground forces. Bye.